Hello there. One cool thing about World of Warcraft content creation and patch releases is that when they go well, I get to have a lot of fun in game and go about making some cool content. And when it doesn't go so well, when there's plenty of spicy stuff out there in the community that I can use to make content on. What I wasn't expecting from this week's patch was being able to do both at the same time. Stay tuned, this week's been a bit of a wild ride. The biggest news by far this week, of course, is the final release of the mystery pirate patch, 10.26. It's pretty fair to say that Blizzard had been spectacularly successful in not only keeping the mystery, but in also completely surprising the player base. Whatever people had speculated about, I don't recall anyone suggesting that it could be a Battle Royale minigame. Now, it's fair to say that this was greeted by a mixture of outright joy and surprise, but also anger and despair from the community. And even in the first few minutes it took me to check out the community reactions, the battle lines had already been drawn between those who really liked the idea and those who absolutely hated it. And that was all before anyone had even had a chance to give it a try. But what about the event itself? Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really a Battle Royale fan. I have played both PUBG and Fortnite, and while I got some fun out of them at the time, this is a genre that's never really become a go-to for me. It's kind of like that TV show you see when you visit your parents and they step out into the kitchen for a bit. You don't hate it. It's a pleasant enough way to use up some time but you'd never actually actively choose to watch it. Nevertheless, I was super interested to try out what looked like a slightly novel take on the genre. So how did it go? Well, my first impression was that live service game lobbies really haven't got any better over the years. Second impression and getting into the game proper? What on earth were they thinking about when they decided on those default keybinds? Third impression? Oh, those NPCs hurt a lot. Well, that match didn't last very long. Now, giving up after one go really isn't me, so I fixed up my key binds. Wondered why on earth it's not possible to bind the main attack to left mouse, especially given Blizzard have Diablo, and they know this stuff. And then I went straight back in for a few more matches that did last a bit longer, but still didn't really grab me. Personally, I found the plunder display to be initially very confusing, and I struggled to figure out how to collect Renown. Eventually, I did realise that Plunder basically is reputation, and I figured out what I was supposed to do. And you know what, by that time, about an hour had passed, and I was kind of starting to have an okay time. A couple of days later, and I am still playing, and I do find it a bit hard to put down, but I'm not 100% sure how much is the gameplay and how much of this is the desire to get the rewards. And that's really the story of my reaction. It does not have the wow factor that the main World of Warcraft game or a good RPG has for me, but it's also not the most terrible of times, even though it does still have its ups and downs. Overall, for me, it's very similar to a lot of World of Warcraft games. I don't fancy it at the start, but once I get into it, it's really not that bad. But at the end, I'm also glad it's over and I don't really want to do it again. Now, I do plan to do a full patch review in a couple of weeks, so I will be revisiting this early impression once I've had a bit more playtime put into the feature. At the end of the day, my biggest issue at the start was the pacing of Renown, and the fact that if your priority was to get Renown, it was objectively wrong to engage in PvP, and the most efficient reaction to encountering some PvP was to die quickly so that you could get into another game. Thankfully, the developers did take this feedback on very quickly and made some significant changes that has made the pacing of the Renown feel better generally, but also ensures that the PvP side does feel a lot more rewarding. And credit where credit's due, the developers have been pretty responsive in addressing many of the issues and making tweaks to try and improve the overall experience. Well, that's me, but what do I think about this as a feature? I think it's great to see the team taking risks and trying out new stuff. If you like a battle royale or you like PvP, I think this is a feature you'll definitely enjoy. If you absolutely hate either or both, you're probably not going to have a great time. If you're someone who maybe dips into PvP a little like me, I think you'll likely have an okay time, but you may burn out a bit after the grind is over for a reason I'll come to shortly. 
I will say that if you're meh about PvP, definitely do give it a try. And make sure you put aside at least an hour for that, as the first impressions may not be entirely accurate. Games are extremely variable, and you can easily go from having 2 or 3 where you get less than 100 renowned, to an easy run where you're getting 800 or maybe even well over 1000 renowned. The biggest criticism I do have is the limited time nature of the event, which according to the PC Gamer report is likely to be around 6 weeks, although this, as far as I know, isn't confirmed by Blizzard. This does mean that the option of doing a little and often approach, perhaps say doing one match per day every other day, doesn't exist, and I think that's putting extra pressure on the player base, and certainly as somebody who prefers to play at my own slow pace, it does start to feel a bit like I'm being forced to play at the developer's pace instead. In my opinion, that's a classic recipe for burnout, and I hope the developers can address this quickly, ideally by extending the event on towards the end of the expansion. In advance of the event, there was much speculation about the risks of not testing this on the PTR. As it turns out, the release has been as close to flawless as any new WoW patch that I've seen. There were issues, I mentioned the renown pacing in the game for example, and there are a few bugs on the retail side, and seriously Blizzard, that trade services channel should be disabled by default. It gives a very bad impression to both new and older returning players. But those issues are kind of the same issues we often see in any patch, even with a PTR. But it does really make me wonder why on earth last week's Hearthstone event was so scuffed. If Blizzard can do this for a complex new feature, why such a sloppy release last week? Beyond that, yeah, there is a little bit of jank. I mentioned the key binders, not having character transforms persist. And that is a bit of miss in the testing too. But, you know, these honestly aren't the sort of major things that I think we were perhaps worried about. Blizzard have shown that they are perfectly capable of putting out at least relatively contained patches without a lot of public testing, and I do have to give them a lot of credit for that. But I do think it is worth addressing the more critical reaction in the community. Pretty much any new content in a game like WoW is always going to be liked by some and loathed by others. That's just the nature of an MMO. And no matter what the event was, there was always going to be folks in the forum and social media expressing that dislike, along with, you know, the usual bunch of lapsed players who just kind of hate everything, even though they don't play it anymore. That all was there, but I personally found it a bit hard to find. Not because of the people who do obviously enjoy this content, and there are plenty who do, but because of the sheer volume of critical posts that are out there. In the 7 plus years I've been playing WoW and following all of this stuff, I personally haven't seen quite this volume of complaints before, not even with island expeditions and warfronts at the start of BFA. There's no doubt in my mind that this is going a bit beyond the normal level of grumbling that, as you might call it, there are a lot of players who are very seriously and genuinely unhappy out there. And I personally think that's mainly due to how the content was introduced. While I think the secrecy worked really well for the event, I think it's been a mistake for Blizzard to drop a patch with only one piece of content and for that to be PvP content. For players who've been trained over many, many years to expect PvE content in patches, and with PvP often feeling like the forgotten thing around the edges, getting a patch with only PvP content is not the surprise they expected or wanted and a reaction akin to a beloved great auntie giving a soccer-loving seven-year-old their favourite team's greatest rival's uniform honestly should have been pretty easy for Blizzard to have predicted. Had this been framed as a special surprise mid-patch PvP event, with 1026 being the Season 4 patch, while there would still have been plenty of the usual complaints for the community, I don't think we would have seen a pushback on this scale. I suspect that many PvE players in fact would have recognised that PvP players have been a bit neglected content wise for a long time and deserve something new and exciting. In fact, even if they had called 1026 a PvP patch several months ago, it would have been a less bumpy ride for them. Another factor in this is that in the announcement of the event, Blizzard were very quick to promote the PvP elements. Now, it is true there is some PvE stuff in there, 
But the Battle Royale genre is not only fundamentally PvP, but it's specifically designed to enforce PvP as the ultimate end state. And if you're a PvP player, once you're proficient at dealing with the NPC difficulty, which honestly doesn't take very long, ultimately then every match is going to present you with the choice of either having to PvP or walking into the storm to avoid it. And if you really don't like PvP, neither of those options feels particularly good. Had Blizzard not tried so hard to promote it as a PvP PvE crossover, many of the unhappy players I think would have just added the rewards to their, you know, it sucks I can't get PvP rewards but I made peace with that a decade ago and went back to enjoying their bit of the game. Instead, we're now in a situation I think where many players felt incentivized enough to go in and give it a try and have now reached that stage where the sunk cost fallacy is kicking in. Now to be clear, this doesn't make the event bad. I love that Blizzard are trying this, PvP has been neglected for far too long and the PvP community deserves new content like this and I love that Blizzard are willing to try and take risks and experiment with new things and I also do hope that we see more of this kind of event in the future, especially some with a PvE focus. But the way it was introduced has made the experience of the game for folks who, for whom this isn't their kind of content significantly worse. And this leads me to a big fear, which is that Blizzard learns the wrong lessons from this. But this isn't the first time World of Warcraft has had unique and iconic events that everybody will remember for the rest of their lives. Remember Anchorage, for example. But many, if not most of those events turn out to be one-offs never to be repeated again. And I've often suspected that that's because Blizzard got some signal internally that the events did enough harm for them to not be worth it. And I worry that the player response here will in the longer term put Blizzard off from doing this again, even though the issue is not with the content, but with the way it was introduced to the player base. The lessons I would want Blizzard to learn here is that dropping a patch which has only one bit of content which only appeals to a very specific set of the player base isn't really a good idea, nor is letting the player base convince itself over several months to expect PvE content when what's coming is PvP. Now is this something you should be coming back for if you don't play World of Warcraft? If you like Battle Royales or you used to like WoW's PvP, a one month sub isn't very expensive and it's probably worth a try. If you hate Battle Royales or you hate PvP, I don't think this is different enough to offer anything that would change that. And if you're a lapsed player who never liked PvP, this really is very unlikely to be for you. That said, if you play Classic, this is effectively free for you, so there's really nothing to use but time. Now, before I move on from covering this particular event, the Plunderstorm is also coming along with a new event for content creators called the Plunderstorm Creator Real. This is a 60 person event that's scheduled for March the 30th with content creators competing against each other in a series of duo matches in the Plunderstorm. So if you want to see what this is all about without even committing a sub, that might be a good avenue to do it. Okay, so was that really all that was included in the patch? Well, no, while this was the main piece of content, there are still another few minor bits and pieces that Blizzard have added along with it. If you did the Back From Beyond Shadowlands meta achievement and then the Veil Strider title, then I've got some good news for you. You now get a new mount, Zoval's Soul Eater. And if you didn't get that meta, don't worry, there is a new version of the achievement that's been added that makes it doable now so that you can still get the mount, albeit you and it's not just the Shadowlands that's getting the meta treatment. There's also a Dragonflight meta, A World Awoken, that finally awards a backer mount called Tyven, of course. Unfortunately, that's not wired up correctly in game, so I can't show it to you yet. But if you're not sure what a backer is, it's those big dogs that you encountered down in the Anarin Plain. And that's not the only mount. The main Dragonflight renowned factions are also getting some mounts tied to their meta. The Dragonscale Expeditions got the Bestowed Ahuna Spotter. The Maruk have the Bestowed Thunderspine Pack Leader. For the Tuskar, it's the Bestowed Trolling Mammoth. 
For the Vodrakina Core, the Bestowed Otto Vanguard, and for the Time Walkers, the Bestowed Sand Skimmer. And if you manage to complete all of those, there's also a bonus mount that you get for a meta for completing all of those particular achievements called the Storm Touched Brufalon. We've also got some new purchasable glyphs that allow you to revert the recent changes that Blizzard made to the various Covenant abilities to turn them back to the Shadowland versions of their appearances. Those are available from the various Covenant Quartermasters. There's also a bunch of tweaks in preparation for Season 4. This includes tweaks to the drop rates for class tokens in Vault of the Incarnate and Aberyst so that they match those in Amirdratil, along with a bunch of adjustments to raid trinkets. And finally, and a little bit of good news, we got a nerf to a couple of affixes. Afflicted has had a nerf to its cast timer, and then Corporeal has been tweaked to ensure that the ads now spawn a lot closer to players, which should make them a bit easier to take out. Okay, let's get on to PTR Watch, which is where I cover news from the PTR, the betas, and data mining. While there's no new Season 4 PTR, at least when I recorded this video, some new info has emerged. Now, while I don't do story spoilers, there are going to be some spoilers about upcoming content here, so do feel free to drop out if you don't want to be spoiled. The prestige mounts for Season 4 have either been data mined or have popped up in the current in-game journal. For PvP, we have the Vicious Dream Talent and Draconic Gladiators Drake. For the raids, we have the Voyaging Wilderling, which is a reward for doing all three raids in normal difficulty. And for Mythic Plus, there's the Infinite Armoridon. Looking a little further ahead, and there's a new Dragon Riding skin for the Midsummer Holiday event. This is for the Cliffside Wilder Drake. And there's also a brace of new Trading Post items, most notably of which are the return of a Storm Mount, the Dreadwake, a TCG Mount, the Blazing Hippogriff. But if you do have those, don't worry, there's also a brand new Skitterfly Mount, the Amber Skitterfly, coming up sometime soon. Well, that's all for this week. It's been a bit of a wild ride overall. If you want to support my channel and keep up to date with when I release new videos, do please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. This is by far the best way to support a relatively new channel like mine. And if you like this update, do also hit that like icon to let me and YouTube know. That's all for now. I will be back soon.